The Six Travelers from 50 Famous Fairy Tales. There was once a soldier who had served bravely in the army, but when the war came to an end, he received his discharge and a miserable three farthings, a salary for all his years of service. Lack a day, I don't like this, he said to himself. If I find the right people, I shall make the king give me all the treasures of the kingdom. And thumping his fist with anger, the soldier stomped off. By and by, he met a man who had cut, who had been uprooting six trees as if they were stalks of corn. The soldier marveled at his strength and asked him to travel with him. That I will do gladly, replied the man. But first I shall take this bundle of firewood home to my mother. Taking up the trees, he wound it around the other five and raised the bundle up to his shoulder and took it away. Soon he returned and said, We too shall get along in the world. They had not gone far before they came upon a hunter who was kneeling on one knee aiming with his gun. The soldier asked him what he was going to shoot, and he replied, Two miles from here, a fly is sitting on a branch of an oak tree, and I wish to shoot out its left eye. Oh, come with us, said the soldier, for if we three are together, we shall surely get on in the world. The huntsman consented and went with them. Soon they saw seven windmills, whose sails were going round at a rattling pace, although there was no wind. At this sight, the soldier said, I wonder what drives these mills, for there is no breeze. They went on, but they had not gone more than two miles when they saw a man holding one nostril while he blew out the other. My good fellow, what are you doing? asked the soldier. Didn't you see the seven windmills two miles from here? replied the man. I'm blowing to make their sails go round. Oh, then come with us, said the soldier, for if four people like us travel together, we shall soon get on in the world. So the blower got up and accompanied them. In a short while, they met another man standing on one leg. The other leg was unbuckled and lying to his side. The soldier said, You have done this, no doubt, to rest yourself? Yes, replied the man. I am a runner, and in order that I not spring along too quickly, I have unbuckled one of my legs. When I wear both, I go too fast, fast as a bird. Well then, come with us, said the soldier. Five such fellows as we will soon get on in the world. The five travelers went on together and soon met a man who had a hat, which he wore over one ear. The soldier said to him, manners, manners, don't hang your hat on the side like that. You look like a simpleton. I dare not do otherwise, replied the other. For if I set the hat straight, a, sh a frost so sharp will come over that the birds in the sky will freeze and fall dead to the ground. Then come with us, said the soldier. For it is odd if six fellows like us cannot quickly get on in the world. These six companions came to a city where the king had proclaimed that whoever could win a, a race with his daughter should become her husband. But if he lost the race, he would lose his head. The soldier heard of this and asked that his servant be allowed to run for him. The king agreed, but said the soldier as well as the servant would lose his life if the race was lost. The soldier agreed and bade his runner to, to buckle on his other leg to make sure of winning. The race was from the palace gate to a distant mountain spring. The first to bring back water from the spring would be the winner. Accordingly, the runner and the princess each received a cup, and the race was started. The princess ran with the speed of the, a young deer, but in less than a minute the runner had passed her and was out of sight. In a short time he came to the spring, and filling his cup, he started back. He had not gone very far when, feeling tired, he lay down and took a nap. Meanwhile, the princess had arrived at the spring and was returning with her cup of water. When she came upon her opponent lying asleep, her eyes sparkled, sparkled wickedly, and emptying his cup, she ran on still faster. All would now have been lost if the huntsman had not been standing at the castle watching the runners with his sharp eyes. When he saw the princess, what the princess had done, he loaded his gun and shot so cleverly that he carried away the rock under the runner's head. This awakened the runner. Jumping up, he found his cup empty and the princess far ahead. However, he did not lose courage, but once again ran to the spring and filling his cup, started back. He ran so fast he passed the princess and won the race with a good ten minutes to spare. The king and his daughter were, were disgusted that a common soldier should win the princess for a bride, and they plotted how they could get rid of him and his companions. At last the, the king said, Do not distress yourself, my dear. I know a way to prevent their return. Then he called to the six travelers 
and led them into a room with a floor of iron, doors of iron, and windows guarded with iron bars. In the room there was a table set with choice delicacies. The king invited them to enter and refresh themselves. As soon as they were inside, he locked and bolted all the doors. That done, he, that done, he called the cook and commanded him to keep a fire lighted beneath the room until the iron was red hot. The cook obeyed, and the six companions sitting at the table soon began to feel very hot. As they grew hotter and hotter, they tried to leave the room and found the doors and windows were all locked. They then realized the wicked king had meant to roast them alive. This is where I come in, cried the man with the hat. So saying, he put on his hat straight. Immediately, such a frost fell that the heat disappeared. Two hours passed. The king thought the six unwanted guests must have been roasted, and he opened the door and went in seeing them. But as the door opened, all six men stood shivering before him and asked to come out and warm themselves, for they said the cold in the room was so intense that all the dishes of food were frozen. In great anger, the king went down to the cook. He asked why his instruction had instructions had not been obeyed. The cook pointed at the roasting fire and said, there's heat enough there, I should think. The king was obliged to admit there was, and he saw that he could not be able to be rid of his visitors in the way that he had planned. Again, the king began to wonder how he could rid himself of his guests. Finally, he summoned the soldier and said, will you take money and give up your right to marry my daughter? If so, you may have as much as you can carry. Well, my lord, replied the man, give me as much as my servant can carry, and you are welcome to keep your daughter with you. The answer pleased the king, and the soldier said that he would send his servant to fetch the sum of money in 14 days. During that time, he had tailors take him a gigant make him a gigantic sack. As soon as it was ready, the strong man, who had uprooted the trees, took the sack and carried it to the king. At the sight of him, the king was filled with dismay and said, What a powerful fellow this must be. And he sighed heavily, for he saw he would have to give up much more gold than he had expected. The king, first of all, had a ton of gold brought. Sixteen ordinary men were required to lift it, but the strong men, taking it up with one hand, shoved it into a sack, saying, Why don't you bring more at a time? This scarcely covers the bottom of the sack. So the king ordered a one wagon load of gold after the other, till seven thousand wagons, all laden with gold, had been bought, been brought. And all of these and all of these strong men pushed into the sack. Still, it was not full. The strong man offered to take whatever was brought, uh, if it would fit, fill his sack. So they brought cups, plates, jewels, silk, fine furs, until at last the man said, Well, I must make an end to this. And besides, if one sack's not quite full, why, it can be tied up much easier. So saying, he hoisted the sack upon his back and went away. When the king saw this one man carrying away all the riches of his kingdom, he became extremely angry and ordered his soldiers to pursue the man and bring him back. Two regiments on horseback took it after the man, who by now had met his companions. The soldiers soon overtook the tri six travelers and shouted to them, You are our prisoners. Lay down the sack of gold. The strong man did not answer, but the blower spoke up. What is it that you're saying? asked the blower. You will make us prisoners? Well, first you will have a dance in the air. So saying, he held one nostril and with the other blew the two regiments away into the sky. One sergeant begged for mercy, and he was a brave fellow, undeserving of such a disgrace. The blower set a gentle puff after him and brought him back without harming him. Then he was sent back to the king and with the message that whatever number of soldiers he might send, all would be blown into the air like the first lot. When the king heard the message, he said, let the fellows go. I made a bargain and I must put up with it. So the six companions took home all the wealth of the kingdom and sharing it with one another lived contentedly for all the rest of their days.